Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. So, that happened, didn't it? Sure did. Nihilotha has been cleared, the final cinematic has been revealed, and uh, compared to Legion's 3 minute one that showed us Sargaris and a lot of interesting lore and speculation, this one was 24 seconds. Now, there is a bunch of lore to cover in this video, but the situation itself is almost a bit more interesting. Now, worry not, I will fully explain the dagger, Nizoth's plan through all of this, and the lore implications, but first, I think there's an important mention here for the sake of artistic integrity. Blizzard wholesale ripped off the ending of Return of the King, they used essentially the same chord progression, they cut two notes from the vocals, then went straight into the vocals from Lord of the Rings, it's highly similar, even the imagery. Now, homage, I understand, but this does feel close to the point of being very disrespectful. And I know the Blizzard do take inspiration from other sources uh, quite liberally, but this is kind of just them lifting shots and music directly from someone else's work. And look, I suppose for this, it's just the staff were really pressured to get it done quickly, uh, but I think you should be aware of that. It's not really that good, and comparing it in editing software, honestly, it's really quite egregious. Now, Blizzard seems to have noticed the backlash to all of this because they did publish the video on their official YouTube channel, not that you'd see it now, because they delisted it. Uh, it had a lot of dislikes, and it's not up there anymore. Also, it seems like they went for a very plain, neat finish to this expansion, making it quite evident that the Black Empire, well, it's kind of just being dealt with very quickly indeed. Now, I've talked to you in the past about 8.3.5 being axed, and 8.3 being massively cut down. I think the plot here is major proof, considering they've been teasing us heavily since 7.0. Oh, and then apparently, um, I've only seen Preach's tweet in this, but supposedly they've removed some mechanics from the Nazoth fight uh, from PTR to live, which is a bit weird. And then finally, if you're interested in the human story of one of the Blizzard CMs who is working on a project uh, regarding classes that you'd really care about, who is axed from Blizzard and has just had his job uh, listing a year later posted back up, and really just some of the bad things that corporate are doing there, check out our second channel. I'll cover it in the WoW news later this week, but if you want to know now, it's on our news channel, and I'll link it down below. Okay, with the preamble done, let's get into the lore. So, in the 8.3 intro questline, we save the engine of Nalak Shah and the Forge of Origination. Then the gang over at the Chamber of Heart come up with a neat plan to kill Nazoth by channeling the power of Azeroth through your heart of Azeroth, kind of using the heart as an anchor point. So, uh, then we just get a quest, go into Nihiloth and kill Nazoth. And you know what? Things are pretty straightforward till we meet Ashara. And Ashara has the Black Blade of the Empire. Now, this has been surprising to many players, but the whole thing does make sense, and I will explain that. Now, Shara gives us the dagger and says that she's going to head off and face Nazoth's masters, and that's clearly teasing a future cosmic storyline. Now, Rathian takes that dagger, and then later on, just before the carapace of Nazoth fight, this cinematic plays. And it's really cool, and it's, I mean, simple enough, right? Rathian uses his dragon form, but he dupes the tentacles, he flies in, he stabs the carapace. It's all pretty cool. But what's interesting is the power surging in the dagger's eye, and then how the dagger seemingly explodes and pushes him back. Now, the dagger, from this point on, is missing, and Rathian looks quite confused that it's no longer in his hand. This is a key bit of info, and we'll come back to it later. Now, this opened the carapace, and that leads us to the boss fight, which leads right into the, you know, situation with Nazoth. Now, during the fight, he talks about how, you know, all that we've done has led, him, you know, us to him, kind of like what Arthas said. He taunts us, saying that we're going to complete the circle and open the way, you know, all that imagery we've sort of seen before. Rathian then quips that for an old god who claims to see everything, he's seemingly blind to what lays before him. Again, more on that line later. So, the Nazoth fight then happens, and during it, you see a, a vision of Sylvanas and Ashara's pact. And I'll break that down fully when we go into the dagger storyline later in the video. Now, essentially, you then defeat Nazoth, and that kicks off Mother and Magni's plan. Your character is sort of taken temporarily, but through the power of Azeroth, you break free, and you Dragon Ball Nazoth. And yep, it turns out that Magni just had that rank 5 focusing Iris all along, and it kills Nazoth. And that's it, final cinematic plays, and that's where, you know, the Lord of the Rings imagery and basically wholesale lifted music comes in. I mean, Blizzard cut the first two chords from the vocals, or uh, notes from the vocals, I guess, but other than that, the segment pretty much plays the same. Uh, highly similar shots, uh, you know, just for Lord of the Rings, it was the end of an incredible trilogy where all that, you know, stuff had time to breathe, but for WoW, it was the end of a 1.5 hour questline. Very little of the Nazoth foreshadowing actually played in here in a meaningful way beyond lore speculation, you know, after this. Uh, and it was definitely a rushed conclusion. You know, we get 24 nice-looking seconds of pre-rendered cutscene, 
But, you know, before that, it's just an in-game cutscene. And sure, you see your character, but the animations are wonky, the spell effects are clipping into each other. It's obviously low budget, it's just not that cool looking, and I think it's well below par for the current day. I mean, yeah, seeing your character is cool, but I think what was sacrificed in that process was absolutely not worth it. I think it was the wrong move. But again, I think it was a budget sort of determined move. Now, going back to the lore, what can we read from this? So it does seem very straightforward, right? It seems like Nazoth is pretty much dead and gone, and that's that. And in a few ways, Blizzard have actually indicated as much in interviews that they've done, you know, instead sort of saying that the focus, you know, of the Void, the theme of the Void, that will appear later on, and maybe we'll see the old gods sort of reincarnated in, you know, new and interesting ways in the cosmos. Now, the cosmos, of course, is exactly where Zalatath went in 8.1.5, so that does make sense, and indeed, Elyria does say that the whispers that she hears have kind of only grown louder following the de uh, demise of Nazoth, so that is yet another nod to, uh, yeah, some of these guys returning, but maybe not on Azeroth, and maybe not on the form that we currently know them. That said, Rathian taking the piss out of Nazoth. That's in character for Rathian, but so is Rathian misunderstanding or maybe underestimating a situation. He's done that in the past. So what could Nazoth's plan be, and what actually is going on with the dagger? We'll do the dagger first. So, Ashara, in the raid, said that she planned to use the dagger to kill Nazoth. Now, in patch 8.1 and 8.2, we see this. Ashara's plan was to get that dagger to free Nazoth, and then to stab him with the dagger, leading to his death. Now, Nazoth knew about Ashara's plan. In the Crucible of Storms raid, we passed Nazoth's trial by defeating Unat. Now, now, this proved to Nazoth that we could defeat Ashara. You see, Nazoth knew that Ashara would only free him if she thought that she could then go and kill him. So, before actually letting her pan, uh, plan come to pass, Nazoth tested us to see if we could defeat Ashara and thwart her plan. After the Crucible of Storms, he then said that the dagger would remain to serve him. Now, that dagger then made its way to Sylvanas. Then, of course, we see the deal between Sylvanas and Ashara. Ashara takes out the Alliance fleet, and then in return, Sylvanas will give Ashara the dagger so that Ashara can kill Nazoth. And that is why Nathanos runs off with the dagger at the start of the Najatar questline. So, how does Ashara still have the dagger in the Nile of the Raid? Um, I mean, like, she's literally being tortured, so how does she still have it on her? Well, there's two options here. I think, A, she hid it with magic, or B, Nazoth kind of allowed her to keep it. He did say earlier that the dagger would serve him, so the dagger may be still part of his plan. Now, fast forward to Rathian's big move. The dagger surges with energy, and then it disappears. Now, that could be the energy being expanded, the dagger being destroyed, you know, to get through to Nazoth, but a bit of me wonders if the dagger is actually Nazoth's backup plan. Basically, what if it works like a phylactery or a soul gem, something like that? I mean, Zalatath was rumored to be a far weaker fifth old god, and that would mean that the dagger is capable of harboring the essence of an old god. If so, then Nazoth actually could have checked out there before the main fight. The dagger is currently missing, and that means that Blizzard could reintroduce him as a character. I mean, maybe he'll even be the Gul'dan of a Void expansion that brings us to the Void Gods, something like that. Uh, now, a final bit of analysis uh, for when Nazoth is defeated, okay? So, look at the colors whenever the Azeroth beam hits him. He seems to burn with light, and I mean like holy light. And look at Nihilotha crumbling. That looks like light. Now, what, what could this mean? Well, it does suggest a light aspect to the Titans, as, you know, he was destroyed with the world soul's energy. And that also reinforces a lot of Elune speculation. Then also look at this, right? That is the dark star turning from void to light. And as you can see, whenever we purify whatever Nilotha is, you know, that crumbling, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, the old sort of void part of the Dark Star shattering off. And if that's the case, and what we've done is we've purified the realm of Nilotha, what is it? I mean, that's probably going a bit too deep today, but what is purified Nilotha? because we could have just purified it, and I think that could have fairly major lore implications and could be something that Blizzard would tie back into the game in the future. But anyway, after the Dragon Ball moment, Magni praises us when we return, and that's basically it. And I'll be real, it's a complete letdown as compared to the end of Legion. You know, the use of Azerite in the Faction War is not acknowledged, the gift of Nazoth isn't actually acknowledged here. Now, Blizzard do plan to pay it off, right? And the gift remaining, and some of the, uh, just some of the Nazoth followers even mentioning the gift, that, I mean, I think that might actually confirm my phylactery theory, but at the end of the day, this was the expansion's big moment, right? They've wove all of these storylines for years. They've always been teasing that it's building somewhere, and, you know, that there's been a grand design that it's all been working to, and that's what the mystery has all been about. But this is what we got. I think what happened is Blizzard sacrificed telling just a simple, straight story for all of these mysteries and unexplained deals that you can only appreciate in retrospect. Now, that is a sacrifice to the upfront story, 
I think it's basically being the worst of M. Night Shyamalan, right? Uh, you know, they've managed to use all of this Nazoth and Faction War interplay to just tell a bad, unclear, and unnecessarily mysterious story that really robbed us the feeling of a war, if that was the theme of the expansion, maybe outside of the Starfying stuff, which was good, and, you know, then they've used, just used that to give us one of the worst expansion endings ever. I mean, there's a powder keg of potential, they leaned into it with a match, but the match went out before they actually reached the fuse, and that's what we're left with. So overall, what do I think? Number one, the Black Empire was absolutely, completely wasted, right? We did not get a new zone to go with all of these new assets, and the Nilotha raid kind of just led nowhere. So that's really disappointing. I think there could have been so much more here. With the context that 835 was at one point in the data mining, and, you know, therefore I think has, you know, it's been cancelled. I think we can say that. With us sort of knowing from BlizzCon that Shadowlands is quite behind schedule, yeah, it seems like whatever potential was here for this patch, it was just kind of all thrown away to hammer something together really quick just to buy time so the devs could move on to the next expansion. And that's really suffered, uh, you know, made the story suffer. Now, also, I think Blizzard's writers really need a humongous wake-up call here. I think they're doing a whole bunch of self-congratulatory, uh, look how smart we are, we're weaving all of these mysterious plot lines, we're just like George Martin, wow, it's a massive, expansive universe. At the end of the day, whenever they do things well, it's when it's stupid and simple and cool. It's Varian doing his heroic sacrifice. Is it complicated? Is it a massive mystery? No. Is it quite cool though? Yes. Sarfang, he's got his nice, very clear character arc. It's good and simple. It's upfront. There's no mystery there. Uh, and, you know, it ends up being a really good storyline that resonates with players emotionally. But then really what happened with BFA, especially the in-game storyline, is it covered so much plot. I mean, we did the faction war at a breakneck pace, so much so that we barely even saw the war itself, you know, in terms of large-scale stuff. Then we did a whole bunch of old god stuff. Then we did Najatar. I mean, Najatar, that could have been a lot more than what we ended up getting there in terms of the storyline. Let's be real, the Najatar storyline story was pretty darn quick. And then we just race through the Black Empire at absolute breakneck speed. They have carved their way through, like, two expansions of lore, and they've done none of it justice, basically. And I think that's really, really hurt them. So essentially, yeah, you know, they didn't let that stuff breathe. I think, you know, they obscured a lot of the current plots and really robbed it of any emotional resonance. Uh, you know, they did that to try to service some sort of big, you know, surprising ending where you, you'd look back at all the things that you've seen, like the Ashara Sylvanas Pact, and be like, wow, that's so cool. That's just like finding out that X character was dead all along in that movie. But, uh, you know, oftentimes, storylines like that, you know, the only way that you can do a big plot revelation at the end, I think, is if you've got an excellent character that progresses through the entire thing. Have we had that with Sylvanas? No, we've not. Did we have that with Sarfang? I mean, yes, but it sort of ended at the end of the faction war, meaning that Nihilotha was just, you know, tacked on at the end. That's really what it feels like. They just wasted that so much. And look, you just need to go back to Antorus. It was big. It had a little bit of mystery to it, but it was just big, dumb fun. It got anime as hell at the end. We had, you know, Space Satan come in and stab a planet. That was kind of simple, kind of cool. That's the sort of thing the Blizzard can do well. I think all of this stuff, look, I think what happens is the, you know, a lot of the writers in the WoW game dev team, uh, to be really clear, like a lot of, you know, when I say writers, a lot of people think I'm meaning like Christy Golden or something like that. She actually works in creative development, as do uh, a lot of other staff, okay? So those C dev staff don't actually dictate where the story of World of Warcraft goes. Uh, they, you know, have writing to do on the Warcraft project from the Warcraft team. It is the Warcraft team that decides where that stuff goes. And what I think has happened is the Warcraft team have sat down, you know, um, like... I'm, I'm assuming it's, you know, probably Steve and like a circle of, you know, a circle of people, right? And I think they've, you know, went into the lore Bible. And I think they've actually thought through loads of really cool ideas, to be fair to them, right? Um, things that I think would be really cool in a D&D &D campaign or maybe in a novel, but maybe less so in a live game, especially an MMO that has a lot of storytelling constraints. And even at that, if I was to give a bit more credit to those, uh, to those people, I'd say that they maybe had a plan for a storyline that at the start of BFA would have tracked through to the end in a very satisfying way, but that, you know, maybe with Shadowlands being behind schedule and BFA having big problems, the team ended up deciding, well, darn, we have got to cut 835, uh, we've got to make 83 a lot smaller, and, you know, in that case, the plot lines that they had tried to weave so carefully just had to be resolved extremely quickly. I mean, 
Think about, say, the stuff with Star Wars, right? Where, you know, what I'll say in that is it seems like they did a trilogy but didn't actually plan a trilogy. In this case, it's like they planned a big plot line, they made a really rigid plan, but as they say, no plan survives contact with the enemy, and what happened is, things derailed that plan, they had to cut it short, and a part of that plan did involve, I would say, some pretty poor storytelling in the, like, patch-to-patch, moment-to-moment stuff, that, you know, at best would have been in service of a really cool conclusion, but they were robbed of that conclusion. So, I think that the WoW writers are probably not thrilled about this, and they almost certainly saw this coming, because they will have seen the reactions to the initial data mined in-game cinematic of Nazoth's demise. But like, certainly when I see, say, the recent Polygon interview with some of the staff when they're talking about why the Black Empire is not its own expansion, I mean, that's media training. I actually, I actually doubt they believe that fully, or I maybe think that they believe that, but in the context of being able to do a full Najatar Plus or Argus-sized Black Empire patch, that is what would have been ideal. And based on the Legion model, I've got to wonder if that's what they actually had planned. But that just did not translate through to the end. And uh, it's a sad situation. It is one that we've been in before. Warlords of Draenor, right? You know, they cut that story really quick. And at the time, a lot of players were like, Gromash Hellscream. That guy wanted to wipe us all out, and he did a whole bunch of very, very nasty atrocities. And now Gromash Hellscream is our friend. What? That was basically the reaction to the end of Warlords of Draenor. And that was a case where, you know, they had an extra raid plan for Shatrath, and they had to cut that Urel's plotline. I mean, I really like Urel in the initial stuff, but then by the end, a whole bunch of people were saying that, oh, Urel's a, like a Mary Sue character. And uh, I can sort of understand that criticism in the context of the middle of Urel's plotline, which probably would have centered around a Shatrath raid that would have explained her rise to power, where, you know, she could have been a hero from her own strengths, her own learnings, her development as a character. That that was cut out, and that really made Urel suffer as a character who I really did like at the start and I thought had tremendous potential. It's a little bit sad now that seemingly she's a weird space sort of sectarian. So, uh, <laughs> I can't wait for Urel to come back, at least it's going to be funny, I'll say that much. But you know, my point here is this has actually happened before. And the last time it happened, it did lead us into Legion because it turned out Blizzard cut a whole bunch of stuff and they just put a whole bunch of work in the next thing, and it turned out to be really good. Maybe that'll happen here, maybe it won't. Certainly, this is disappointing, and I hope that the core lessons are, are actually learned here. So, there you go. That's, that's it. Battle for Azeroth is over, folks. You can... Uh, yeah, it just kind of... It didn't really end, it just sort of ran out of steam. It's like they stopped putting coal in the engine, and the train just kind of went, eh. And I suppose we've just got to, you know, get out of the train and, like walk to our destination station on foot for a few miles. That's kind of what it feels like. But at the end of the day, there's some funnel loon stuff to speculate about. In terms of lore videos, we've got a really big one on the fa our, you know, our favorite space goats. So there's a lot of good stuff to talk about. We got, a, you know, we'll have plenty of content over the next while, so it's not going to hurt us too much. But uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's what happens. Uh, and my honest opinion, if you want another video to watch, this is, this is one where I'm actually not really, this is not about blaming Blizzard. It's about blaming Activision Blizzard, the larger corporate entity. Uh, it's a story of Yidzins, I could never say his name, uh, Caden, right? The, um, you know, the, the CM, one of the ones who notably went. He was working on a very major project relating to classes and they've just reposted his job role. And it's really scummy, and they did that to him. I've actually forgotten her CM name, uh, Christina, and her surname begins with M, from the Hearthstone team. Uh, they did that to, to her as well. Just that the role that they posted, uh, like, two months after they fired her, which was basically her job, I think it was at less pay and also had a whole bunch more responsibilities. Uh, so it's some real scummy corporate behavior, and I think it's an important video for us all to watch so we can understand the human side of, uh, of what's actually going on. I think that's a, just a really vital thing for us all to appreciate. Thankfully, though, Caden has uh, landed on his feet in Bioware, but I think it'll be an interesting video for you. Anyway, let me know what you think. Thank you very much. I will see you soon. <laughs>